Good. Alhaji Farooq Hamza, he's joining us. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Should, should I say salam? Salam alaikum to you. Yeah, salam. How, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. How, how very should I too. greet someone who is back from Hajj? Should I say welcome back or there's a special yeah, greeting? Back. There's nothing special about I've it. I've seen a lot. I was in Kumasi for the Napu unveiling. So many people at the Hajj, uh, at the airport coming to welcome people returning from Hajj. Mm. Are you still receiving people coming back or the final flight is back? Yeah, the final flight came in on Tuesday. Oh, okay. The last flight came in on Tuesday. Yes. I see. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Let's talk about the performance so far. Um, you went to Hajj, you're back. Talk to us about your assessment from your own perspective. Well, I think that um, it's been... Uh, it's gone very well. Um, we have successfully completed the Hajj where we sent a contingent of 4,000 pilgrims. 4,000? 4, 4,000 pilgrims, yes. So to manage... 4,000 individuals from varied backgrounds for a period of 35 days in another country is a complex, you know, endeavor. And over so a month? Have, yes, over a month. A total of 35 days we've been away. And so to have sent all of them and brought almost everybody back except four people who passed on to glory, I think that um, is... Uh, we can say it's been quite successful. Yeah. And uh, what kind of deployment do you do? What structures do you work with? So you are the Hajj board. Um, do you have people who help you with these 4,000 people? What kind of people? Is, what's your staff training? How do you do it? Or you use a Hajj authority? How do you work? Do okay, it? so um, the Hajj board is structured this way. You have the board mm -hmm. and the secretariat. Okay. So in the secretariat, we have all manner of so the secretary staff. is the operational wing absolutely the board is policy exactly. direction exactly yes. oh, okay so you're not the board chair of a hajj board no i'm the executive secretary there's a chairman the chairman is uh, honorable ben abdallah the, okay that's yes. a chairman and you are so you are like the technical guy running operations guy absolutely oh, yes. okay okay yes. mm -hmm. talk yes. to us more please so we work with ghana hajj agents who are the, the initial conduits through which we get we receive these uh, pilgrims mm -hmm. So they are part and parcel of our operations throughout. And these are the accredited Hajj agents. So the, the pilgrims come through them. Mm -hmm. Then we register them and process their travel documents. We have an IT you know, uh, office in our setup. We have the administration. We have communications. We have medical outfit and so on. So we process these pilgrims and get their visas issued. Then we follow it with a flight schedule where we plan when and how they are going to fly from the two different ports, Tamale and Accra. Then we rule out a movement plan. I see. Yes. If I wanted to go to the Middle East, I can simply go get my own visa and travel. Why yes. do I have to go through you for Hajj? Which the country treats me as an individual, doesn't it? Or no. there's a way it will praise that Hajj, Saudi Arabia will not accept me if I'm coming as a tourist who wants to also perform the Hajj. Good. So there's a, dis a distinction between just going to Saudi Arabia as a tourist and going to perform Hajj. Hajj is a product of a bilateral arrangement between two countries, between Saudi and Ghana. So government of Ghana is represented by the Ghana Hajj Board and the Hajj Secretariat to organize those intending to perform the Hajj in Saudi Arabia. So the the government of Saudi Arabia gives you a quota. So Absolutely. all Ghanaians coming for Hajj must be on that list. Exactly. Okay, but if that's a list, why do we still have to use the Hajj board and Hajj secretary? That's what I... So like I said... Must we go through that by all means? You must necessarily go through that because it is the only body recognized by the Saudi authorities as well as government of Ghana. So do all countries have something like Hajj board exactly, and Hajj secretary? Exactly, yes. For purpose Almost of all Hajj. countries, for purpose of Hajj, yes, so, because the Saudi government signs the Hajj agreement with one entity or institution for each country. I see. So in Nigeria, for instance, we have the NACON that represents the government of Nigeria and is the body mandated to carry pilgrims to Saudi. Of course, there will be uh, companies or private entities working like we have agents here mm -hmm. together with the Hajj commission to then carry the pilgrims to, to there are people who argue against state interference or involvement in religious activities what is the role of ghana government in hajj affairs 
Does the Ghana government subsidize the Hajj fairs? What is the what's the contribution? So if I were going to Hajj, what percentage of my expenses is taken care of by the government of Ghana? Okay, so historically, um, successive governments have always supported or subsidized Hajj mm -hmm. uh, from many many years uh, ago. Mm -hmm. So government has in various ways supported Hajj. Um, as to the proportion of the the cost government takes, it depends on the particular Hajj year and the particular government. So let's look so at this just ended Hajj. What was the government direct involvement? Okay, so what does government offer? I know there's a Hajj village. That's exactly. a government thing. Exactly. Apart from that, what else does government do? So this year in particular, and even last year, government did not provide subsidy. Okay. Direct subsidy as in contributing to reducing the fare. So it is the full fare that was uh, paid or charged. Okay. Except, you know, uh, this year where we have the, the exchange differential, where you are looking at the, the rate in CD having remained the same between last year and this year. Mm. Naturally, it means that the dollar equivalent would have, you know, reduced. Okay. So, uh -huh. so, so the Hajj village is given to you for free? By the government? Yes. Or you pay for it. it? No, we don't pay for it. The flights, you, you rent them. Exactly. You rent the flights yes. and bring them here. Exactly. And then they come and carry over. So all of these are you and the pilgrims and the and the, all the agencies that are involved. Absolutely. So government necessarily does not get involved. But government appoints the board, right? Exactly. So the board chairman is a government appointee. And all they, the board they, members. So they yes. pay for, you know, running of the board, but not necessarily for sending people abroad. Exactly so. Okay. Yes. And this happens every year. Every year. It's always been that since time immemorial. So after Hajj, the, the committee goes to rest until next year or the until other the next Hajj season. So, so the Hajj season spans uh, about six months period because um, you have to start the preparatory works from sometime in November or December. Mm -hmm. And it goes all the way to June, July, where the Hajj itself takes place. Okay. Yeah. Let, let's talk about the processes. So you have agents that are the first respondents. So exactly. if I want to go to Hajj, I have to go through them. Or can I come through you straight? Yeah, you can come through us straight. You can come through us straight. Uh, so there are pilgrims who want to have special arrangements when they get to Saudi. So you can come to us straight to discuss this. Mm. But the overwhelming majority of our pilgrims, over 80%, come through the, the agents. agents yes. Do you s exist to make profit so that what you charge a pilgrim, are you supposed to make some profit on it or you only give them Absolutely the rate not. of what they are supposed to pay? Absolutely not. It is at cost or even uh, below cost. So... There is no intent to make profit, and there is no profit calculated as part of the the cost mechanism of or the cost build up of the the Hajj. So, if I were to go to Saudi Arabia on my own, book my own hotel, book my own flight, spend one month and return, are you sure I would spend seventy five thousand Ghana cities, which is what you have collected from people? Okay, so I would no. spend less, wouldn't I? Yes. So no. you are you are burdening me unnecessarily. Well, that is, uh, you know, completely uh, not the case. Mm. First and foremost, if you are going to Hajj or to Saudi on your own, you would have to acquire visa. You would have to pay for flights. And when you get there, depending on how long you are going to stay, you will have to pay for hotel accommodation. Depending on where you want to visit or what you want to do, you may pay for transport, local or internal transportation. You will pay to feed yourself. And that is just ordinary tourism. But in the case of Hajj, the Hajj proper takes place at a location just outside of Mecca called the Holy Sites. So it is a city made up of tents only. So you must necessarily be there to perform Hajj. And going there to stay there for five days, you know, has some minimum requirements that you have to go through to be able to get there. So you have to get permits, only special buses are allowed to go there, and you have to pay to have tents allocated to your group or your country, and you have to pay to be fed throughout the period you are going to be there. 
ground handling services and will take place whilst we are there. And this, this is a city that is, like I said, it's a tent city, but fully air conditioned with all the infrastructure and amenities you will expect. And you are going to be charged for all those services that, that are going to be rendered to you there. So ordinarily, if you were traveling to Saudi for tourism, you wouldn't go to such a place. Mm -hmm. And so the cost associated with moving to the holy sites will not be part of your uh, cost calculation. Mm -hmm. So for those who, for instance, went on their own using tourist visas, they bypassed or avoided all these costs. So they were also not permitted to even go to the holy sites, let alone perform the Hajj. So if you don't go through the Hajj board or Hajj secretary, you cannot perform Hajj? Yes, except if you use unapproved or unauthorized means to get yourself there. And it is one thing to even find a means of getting there. Mm -hmm. And it is another thing to sustain yourself whilst being there. Because you can't be at a location for five days without having proper accommodation. Mm -hmm. The tents are a form of accommodation where you live there mm -hmm. and you'll be fed whilst you are there. So for those who go to that place on their own, mostly they wander about under uh, interchanges, under bridges, and open sign. And they are the ones that were affected mostly okay. by the, the, the heat uh, strokes and so on. Let's talk about the political size, uh, side of the cost of Hajj. Mm. Uh, John Mahama, as of the time he was leaving office, his government was charging 11,000 cities for people to go perform Hajj. And for those governments, you are charging 75,000 Ghana cities. Why? Okay, so thank you very much. Um, maybe before I even move to 11,900 uh, from uh, Princess Muhammad's time mm -hmm. to the 75,000, when uh, President Muhammad took over or the NDC government took over mm -hmm. Uh, from the Kufour government, it was not 11,900. It about was it? under 3,000. Okay. And so, certainly, something must have accounted for it moving from that point to 11,900. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it has gone up from 11,900 to 75,000 cities. But what's the difference? Um, until recently, the Ghanaian pilgrims who went to perform Hajj did not have included in the cost build-up feeding throughout their, the period of their stay in, in Mecca. So it was just the, the, uh, uh, the board or the committee taking, getting you to Mecca mm -hmm. and then taking you to the, the holy sites where you perform the Hajj. Of course, during the holy sites, you'll be fed. But beyond that, during your stay in Medina, during your stay in Mecca, and we are talking about a period of close to 30 days that you are going to be in Saudi. Mm -hmm. Feeding was not part of the arrangement. The, even transportation arrangement that was done there is quite different since the, the time of uh, uh, President Joe Mahama. Mm -hmm. Of course, things have also not been the same in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. You would so that be well not, aware. So that, that is now cost uh, transportation and feeding. Not just that. I'm just saying, so... Yeah, it's, part it's part of, of it, yes. So, exactly. in, so in the past, if I had gone to Hajj in 2015, I would not have been fed. I have to feed myself, is that what I'm saying? Absolutely. I would not, trans I would not be transported. You would be transported, out. but the, the, the type of transportation that was used then mm. is not the same now. What's the difference? Okay, so the, the Saudi authorities for the past almost 10 years decided to withdraw old, all old transportation or buses that were used for the purpose, for purposes of Hajj and gave conditions for only transportation of certain minimum Standard, but still a bus. Use. Yes, it? and, yes. I, and they were so paying the for cost, the bus in the course, past. So the cost will not be the same. But they were paying for the bus. In yes, 20, but if you are you are paying for a bus at ten cities, mm. and now you are paying for a bus that is of higher standard at mm. twenty cities, mm. the cost cannot be the same. 
oh, if I was paying for Chololi in 1997, yes, the rate that I charged then would be similar to what I pay for. So if you were paying for, for, for Chololi, let's say you were, you were no. using a uh, 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 trotro or two mm. seven, it's still uh, the same cost. It's still the same cost of transport. So it's not like transportation cost is a new thing. It's always be, if if they've always been paying for transportation then they are still paying for transportation so yes i but, don't get it how different it is, it is it is it is different if you are using a trotro mm. uh, uh, bus mm. compared to say an stc bus yeah if so the pay, cost will not be the same but if you're doing you STC, pay, so if you you're doing stc you will be cheaper because of the occupancy no, no, i'm just using the type of bus okay fine not i'm saying the, that transportation was yes, being paid for yes, is not being paid for exactly. so leave that out you only the only thing i would accept is that food they were not paying for food then they are paying for food now even that one is subject to uh, verification you can't just i can't leave it out because for instance let me even come to hotel accommodation as well mm -hmm. they were being accommodated all right mm -hmm. but they were accommodated for instance, in Medina, mm -hmm. at locations that were very far from the holy site where you are expected to spend much of your time praying. So if you brought the people, if you've now brought the people close enough to the location mm -hmm. where you cut down on their, uh, you know, movement cost and the standard where they were even living in hotels that you find, you find bed bags and hotels of very, very poor quality and you move them to accommodation that befits or that uh, you know is an improved version of what they used to experience mm. you certainly would not expect to be the same thing but that aside we all know that taxes or taxation was something not known mm. in the kingdom of saudi arabia they've introduced taxes they've introduced taxes so we pay taxes for we pay to taxes hard. and we pay they've introduced all manner of taxes including vat mm. but are you on not, almost all their, their their services are you not ignoring the elephant in the room which elephant is that your government the one you are part of mismanaged the economy so that the exchange rate of 2016 is different from the exchange rate of today and so the real reason that people are paying so much is because your government has failed to manage the dollar. Why? When are you going to mention that as I, one of I, the elements? I, I don't think. Of course, dollar is a factor or, or of not. the cost. Dollar is a factor of the cost. Because from eleven thousand to seventy-five thousand, dollar has never been the same. Dollar has never been the same. Mm. It has always increased from time immemorial. Yes, but so for, we it, for, but for it to but for it to move in two thousand and nine from three thousand to two thousand and sixteen within a period of eight years to eleven thousand. That, that, that is allowable. No, it's, it's but for 11,000 no, to no, 75,000 no. within no. the same period, it's, it's, that's it's, not, it's that, movement. that movement is worse than apartheid. No, 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 no. We are not talking about dollars specifically. But mm. the bottom line is that no, it's dollar, dollar has not been the same since time immemorial. Yes, it has ex always except moved. That, except that it's so moved that faster this time around. Only Don't you agree? Accounted no, for that the appears English. to be the only thing. It is one of the factors. No. But it's not the only thing. A large. A large. Uh, but I've just told you Alaji, the fact that Alaji. there was no taxes I'm at all that, in um, Saudi. Alaji. Now it is there. You can verify this. Alaji. Something that wasn't there before. Alaji. The things you've explained. Transportation, the same thing. Cost of hotel, same thing. Well, how much a hotel will cost me in 1957 is the same thing that it will cost me now, except that the this times are true. different. No, no, no. The, the figure may be different, but it does not mean that it, is not, it doesn't correspond with the times. The only thing that is causing this exponential increase is the exchange rate. That is the it's not foundation. The only thing. You should it's accept one of that. the things. You see, it's I was only thing. building Perhaps onto 70, a point. I was only building onto a point. You see, the Saudi authorities themselves, mm -hmm. over the years, mm -hmm. had been subsidizing Hajj to a very large extent. They've stopped subsidizing? Absolutely. I so see. where you had those managing the Hajj itself, being paid by the Saudi government, they have for the past since 2018, mm. they have moved to companies now managing Hajj instead of government agencies. Alaji, in 2013, Hajj was 6,800, 2014, 12,000 cities, 2015, 11,000 cities, 2016, 11,000. That's maintaining its position. 2017, 15,000 cities. Yes. 2018, 15,000 cities. Yes. 2019, 19,000 cities. Yes. The two years, 2020 and 21, there was no hard because of COVID. 2022 was 39,000 cities. Exactly. Then how do you move from 20, 
2022 39,000 cities to 75,000 cities the following year, and you are saying to me that this is not exchange rate. And yeah, this explain. I'm well, not saying I mean, it's, it's not taxes. exchange rate. It's not part of it. Very exchange well. rate is a part no of problem. it. I'm saying it's not the only thing. That's fine. It's one of the factors. Let's proceed. But, um, but let me also let me also draw your attention to something. Uh -huh. Let's keep in mind that mm -hmm. it is not only Ghana that participates in Hajj. Okay. So it shouldn't be seen as though it is only in Ghana that hard fares have gone up. Very well. So you cannot attribute it to the exchange rate, w for instance. Do you have the figure for Nigeria, for instance, from what figure to what figure? Nigeria, as we speak, or their, the, the, their fare in dollar terms is about 6500 Currently, this year? Yes. How much was it last year? How much was it last, last year? year? Yes, yes, around about six thousand dollars. Ah, so it's stuck to the same thing now. But our fee, our fare last year was seventy-five thousand cities. It's the same seventy-five thousand this year. Oh, okay. And, and in dollar terms, what is that? That is less than six thousand dollars. So now you agree that is a dollar that is a problem. I'm not saying dollar is not a factor. Don't get me wrong. I'm okay. saying dollar is one of the attributes. It's one of the the the, the factors that will give rise to okay. cost but it's certainly not the only one we need to go the four persons who died in saudi the Ghanaians, did they have to be buried there you're bringing them home what's the plan no they were buried there were buried when you there. go to hajj and you die there you are, you are buried there okay yes. so it is um but there are other Ghanaians who've died who are not under your care yes right? about 14 others so in total we lost about 18 people 18 Ghanaians, yes, but four there. were under your guidance. exactly yes moving forward you would advise people not to go through Unorthodox We've means. always been doing that and we'll continue to advise them. Perhaps this is um, a big eye opener for them because most of those who died that are outside our contingent mm. died because of the, the heat stroke. Mm -hmm. In my, in, uh, in Mina, the holy site, like I said, it is a tent city where everybody is supposed to be in their tents. And these people didn't have places to uh, you know accommodate themselves so in the, the open mm. you know spaces and under bridges and so on so they died as a result of the heat we, ha we have to end it here thank you so much for joining us thank you very much for having me Alhaji Farouk Hamza yeah. is the executive secretary of the Ghana Hajj board That's